Ladies and gentlemen, why did Alec Baldwin fire the Colt 45 and aim, aim and fire, pull back the hammer, aim and fire at the cinematographer without the armor there? It was the only time the armor wasn't there to hand him the firearm. This is a very key fact. And I know that there, there's some people say, well, why do you always talk about this story? Because every day there's a new monumental, epic, extremely important revelation or fact or wrinkle to this story that we don't know the day before. So I always mention that the armor wasn't in the church. I don't always mention that it was the only time the armor wasn't in the church. That could point to sabotage. Father of Rust Armor says sabotage might be to blame for live rounds in a gun used by Alec Baldwin. The firearm used by Alec Baldwin was loaded by Hannah Gutierrez Reed. It was then given to the assistant director and perhaps another person. What happened in between the time that Hannah Gutierrez Reed gave the firearm? to David Halls. Because David Halls is now going to bat for Alec Baldwin right after Alec Baldwin tried to throw him under the bus. This is how Hollywood works. There's like zero sense of honor or integrity or... So David Hall says, oh, I, I saw Alec Baldwin's finger outside of the trigger guard of the firearm. This is absurd. This is just as, obs just as nonsensical as irrational and irrational as I only pull the hammer back. I was trained never to point and fire at anyone, but, she, but Alec Baldwin pulled the hammer back at the cinematographer, and it wouldn't be the cinematographer telling him to do this or that. It would be the director. So the director is completely silent, even though he was injured by this... Uh, wonderful, very thoughtful mani potential maniac in Alec Baldwin. So the director is silent. His silence helps Alec Baldwin. The assistant director has been bullied or, you know, steamrolled into compliance by Alec Baldwin. So the assistant director initially was blamed immediately by Alec Baldwin. Oh, he yelled cold gun. Well, why, if that's true, why would he yell, why would he yell that phrase? And then look at Alec Baldwin's finger with, like, bionic vision. Makes no sense at all. But again, they're all trying to cover their own behind and maybe latch on to a narrative that could potentially be beneficial to them. So the director and the assistant director know they're too high up. They have to align their stories with Alec Baldwin. So the, 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 the notion that... The notion that the cinematographer told Alec Baldwin to aim and pull the hammer back in her direction is an absolute 100% lie. It's a lie because it's a, a certainly a lie through omission. He he did not he 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 deliberately omitted certain facts of that sequence of dialogue between the director potentially the cinematographer might have said something, but the director was almost certainly directing him. Because that's the way the film sets work. You can see, like, there's a whole bunch of segments online talking about directors are the ones that actually speak to the actors usually, almost always. Not always, not necessarily the cinematographer. The issue of sabotage is in this article, the Deadline article. There's also an ABC News interview. Now, the... The interviewer from ABC News, of course, says, well, Alec Baldwin was given the direction from the cinematographer. And are you worried that Hannah Gutierrez Reed, your daughter, is because it's Thel Reed, the legendary veteran um, armorer, okay? Are you worried that your, your daughter's going to jail or prison? And he said, no, not, not at all. Because the attorneys very likely have information that the set was tampered with. I don't even think that they gave the police the correct firearm. If, indeed, Alec Baldwin pulled the hammer back 
and then it went off because he, his, his finger, his thumb slipped, it would have been a modified firearm, in which case Baldwin would have known because he would have purchased a modified firearm to work in that manner. But if he's if if they had given if they had given the police and now the FBI has all all the ammunition or evidence or firearms, if they had given the police a firearm that he didn't use, so then they find out, hey, you know what? This isn't the firearm that matches up with the bullet found in the director's shoulder. Well, then it goes. Even if it goes to a criminal trial, even if he gets criminal charges, he can say, well, I don't. I wasn't even there. I left the church. And his defense will be exactly the defense of the armorer, although that that defense is a little bit more genuine, a lot more genuine. She wasn't in the church. Why? Now, if if somebody wanted to be uh, think about the most nefarious possibilities, that would po- po- possibly lead to oh well, the actor deliberately wanted to end someone's life by not having the armorer there and creating a, an entire. Um, you know, chaotic situation. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is there had to have been a reason other than just chance that the armor wasn't there. Because if Alec Baldwin is this thoughtful veteran actor who really cares about safety, then he doesn't rely on the assistant director. The assistant director, it's not the, even the assistant director's attorney when they were actually trying to, like, defend the assistant director before they said, okay, well, wait a second, Alec Baldwin's uh, fate is tied to ours, perhaps. When the, assistant, when the attorney for the assistant director said, oh, it wasn't even my client's responsibility, that's the best thing she could have said, it's the best thing that the assistant director could have done, is defend himself immediately after Alec Baldwin tweeted out that it was his fault. He went from the assistant director to the armorer, in the, and then to the cinematographer, the, the, the victim, the person that he, whose life he ended. Okay, nobody should forget, Alec Baldwin was holding the firearm, okay? Just like that man was driving the car, the way they, the, journalism, the journalism of today is suppress any story that doesn't go along with the left-leaning Democratic Party narrative. So a car plowed through. No, 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 it was a man who didn't like Trump, who didn't? Who definitely, very likely, not only didn't like Trump, but wanted to send a message. Okay. In that fa- that horrible tragedy weeks back. But anyway, that's not what's. That's not how the media runs. The media is let's push this com- these completely irrational and insane narratives, and it'll be gobbled up by enough of the population, to where we'll have this malleable story. So. He fired the weapon. He was in charge of of finding out if he was in charge of finding out if the firearm was loaded. He had to wait. If he wanted to blame anyone, Alec Baldwin, he had to wait for the armorer to get there. If, if the whole thing was about time and money, then that's the producer's fault, okay? And if it's, well, I don't know, I, 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 didn't, I didn't decide. So Alec Baldwin will throw the director and the assistant director under the bus. See, this is the thing. The director is silent, which kind of makes sense. Alec Baldwin should have been silent, but the director doesn't care about protecting what or, or the truth pertaining to the cinematographer. Cinematographer is no longer here to give her side of the story. Her side of the story would be very different from Alec Baldwin's side of the story. But see, they have... It, it's, it's this morbid advantage that Alec Baldwin has because the cinematographer is no longer here to, t- to, say, to tell the world that he's full of nonsense. So... Did you hear the director or the assistant director say anything different pertaining to Alec Baldwin's absurd... Discussion or, or description of the cinematographer telling him to do this. What was the director doing? What was the assistant director doing? So the, according to Alec Baldwin, the only thing the assistant director did was yell, cold gun, that's it. <laughs> and then the cinematographer took over and told him, point in my direction, pull the hammer back. And this is also 
an illusion, a sleight of hand. It is like the morally superior liberal, de- liberal Democratic uh, Party's version of David Blaine or Copperfield or Houdini. What they, what, what he's trying, what he's doing is saying the following: I would never point and fire at somebody, but I would point and pull the hammer back because I was told to. Those two, those two vantage points are inconsistent with one another because they're the same thing. If you would point a firearm and pull the hammer back, you would also then pull the trigger of the firearm, which he did 100%. He's lying through his teeth. Anyone who believes him is a gullible fool. But again, he's very likely going to get involuntary manslaughter charges. He's making a mockery of law enforcement. But that's... He has a lot of media on his side. He thinks... true. Alec Baldwin truly thinks, and Hilaria Baldwin truly think that if they can make this all about them, they can come out smelling like roses, even if he gets criminal charges. Because he's probably spending, the man is probably spending uh, more money every month than the average American makes just to keep up his real estate, leases, uh, mortgages, you know, whatever else he owns. He needs to keep, he, he lives in the Hamptons and New York. It's the most expensive lifestyle on the planet. So his vantage point is, the, in Hilaria, when she, when she uh, sends these, 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 these love notes on, on Instagram, it's not just about love. It's about, okay, I'm going to continue because she's part of the equation too. The more people, we have 320 million Americans in this country. We have enough Americans who are gullible enough and who dislike Trump enough for them to say anything that happens, as long as it's not Trump tweeting, is just fine. And you know what? I like Alec Baldwin. I, could, I can't imagine him doing it. And it wasn't his fault anyway. These people are very ignorant when it comes to firearms. The same people who want to ban and erase the Second Amendment. They say, well, you know what? He was given the firearm, and, and, and it wasn't his fault. They ha- he pulled a hammer back. What's the hammer? I don't know. Um, and so this will work. If you have a nation of 320 million Americans, how many people believe that Trump was installed by Vladimir Putin? A sizable number of those people, almost all of them, believe Alec Baldwin. These are the people who believe the myths and the hoaxes and the bogus nonsense. They, the media tries to paint Trump voters as like toothless, ignorant uh, you know, buffoons. The, actually, the opposite is true. The Chris Cuomo's of the world, the Andrew Cuomo's, the Juicy Smollier's, the, the Jeffrey Tubins, the, uh, the Zoom and Tubin on the Zoom meeting, the Eric Schneidermans, the um, Michael Avenatti's, okay, the Alec Baldwin's. These are the people who are not only ignorant about a whole lot of things, but these are the people who will preach and pontificate and judge and condemn and they're speaking to a portion of the population who will believe anything as long as it goes against Trump. Trump has altered their spirits, their hearts, their souls, their minds. There's a political component to this that is fascinating to me. This is not just about Alec Baldwin ending someone's life. It's about Alec Baldwin trying to get away from repercussions utilizing his, his, the, the, the clout or the, the currency he has amassed through, through endless political diatribes and, and social media posts and his four years of um, pretending he was uh, Trump on SNL. This is, this is a microcosm of what, what could possibly, in a tragic sense, take place in American society. A wealthy actor who is who is anti-Trump, very much part of the liberal Hollywood elite, morally superior scene, literally ends someone's life. Then blames the victim, says the cinematographer told her to do it, that he didn't pull the trigger of the firearm. And people believe him. Imagine what is next in our society. Not like... Not just, hey, it's an accident, he was an, it was an accident, it was a film set, he could have kept quiet, and I would have been talking about the upcoming stock market crash, and, and a whole bunch of things, Juicy Smollier, a whole bunch of things, okay? But think about the philosoph- philosophical 
repercussions or the spiritual repercussions or the societal repercussions of this case, if you've lasted this long, 15 minutes in, think about that. He wants a 24-year-old armorer who could have been somewhat incompetent or could have been very competent. Who knows? If she was overworked, that's the fault of the producers. I happen to side with the armorer a lot more than I do Alec Baldwin, infinitely more, obviously. I think the armorer's attorneys are right. There was sabotage. Someone probably introduced a live round, not only in the firearm, but all over the set because there were already pl stories of plinking and target practice um, and, and a stunt double firing two live rounds prior to Alec Baldwin. Now, the trajectory of the bullet, how does the bullet go into the cinematographer's stomach and then exit out of, exit into the shoulder of the director? That makes no sense at all. That points to two rounds fired. That makes no sense at all. There's nothing here that makes sense. And here's a man who spent the past five years pontificating and preaching about how horrible Trump is, and Trump didn't end someone's life. And if you want to say he did, more people die, more people lost their lives of you-know-what under mashed potato brains Biden than Trump. But anyway, he thinks, Hilaria and Alec Baldwin think that if they can just go on Instagram, show their love, if he can MC, if he can be the master of ceremonies for human rights <laughs> events, that he can just, just, you know, smell like roses after all of this. Even with the criminal trial, if you introduce as much doubt as possible, he can get involuntary manslaughter and still get out of it and then still survive this and then make a movie 10 years ago with Meryl Streep, 10 years from now again with Meryl Streep or whatever. He'll be embraced by enough people who don't care that he ended someone's life. That's the problem. What, what liberals are able to get away with is infinitely more heinous and atrocious than anything a conservative can get away with in this, in this society. So if a liberal democratic... Hollywood, Jeffrey Tubin's an example. Great legal mind. Great. On a Zoom meeting, does a Tubin, and then he's rehired. It would never happen to a conservative. It would never happen. Give me your thoughts below. Subscribe to the Stock Market Crash channel. That's below. Read my latest article in The Federalist on the upcoming stock market crash. Um, Chris Cuomo wouldn't have stayed on CNN for that long if he was just a conservative on Fox News. He wouldn't have stayed... It, 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 well, the, the double standard is unbelievable. Andrew Cuomo, okay, when they say, well, Trump's handling. Andrew Cuomo, you can't, you can't delineate or you can't separate Trump's handling of you-know-what from Andrew Cuomo and Whitmer and Newsom and Phil Murphy, of all people. When people say that, oh, well, uh, Trump's handling, oh, worst in the world. He had Chris, he had Andrew Cuomo. Other countries didn't have Andrew Cuomo or Whitmer or Phil Murphy. So how do you, how do you then, like, do you not know basic civics? Uh, just how our government functions. There's a federal and state government. He's not in charge. Trump wouldn't have been in charge of what people like Andrew Cuomo do. He didn't tell Andrew Cuomo to put infected people in, in elderly care facilities, nursing homes. Okay, but anyway, this is the, you're talking about a, you're talking about a sizable enough part of the U.S. population who will believe anything Alec Baldwin says. Not because it's rational, just because it, it, it's opposing Trump. Anyway, give me your thoughts below you want to support my work, my Patreon is below in the pinned comment. Someone introduced... some. The live rounds were all over the place. And Alec Baldwin himself could have put the live round in there. To prove a point, I'm not saying he did. Anyone could have. The armorer wouldn't have. Because then she would never have been... She would never have worked again. Now, Alec Baldwin could have, in a fit of rage, tried to just aim at the... At the uh, at the, uh, at the, at the uh, camera. Anyway, give me your thoughts.